When you think of space travel, you likely picture astronauts heading hundreds of miles above the Earth. But as part of a training exercise, astronauts from the European Space Agency are headed in the opposite direction, underground. Six astronauts are currently in the rocky caves of Sardinia, Italy. Then on July 1st, they'll move below ground for a six-night expedition in complete blackness. They'll be left to operate like they would on the International Space Station. Michael Massimino is a former NASA astronaut and the author of the upcoming book, Spaceman, an astronaut's unlikely journey to unlock the secrets of the universe. We're so excited to have you here. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thanks for having me, Vlad. So, first of all, before we even get started, is it yeah. true that you're the first astronaut to ever tweet from space? Yes, that is true. <laughs> That's pretty that was cool. First, it was just a timing thing. Twitter was getting popular in 2009, and I was the first uh, guinea pig to do it. And now all astronauts do it. You were it probably now. like, wait, did it work? Did it just happen? What we happened? we <laughs> did it on a computer. <laughs> and it went out there somewhere into the atmosphere and made it down to the ground. So it worked. So you, yeah. you're saying that you had a very high-speed internet connection. No, actually, ap the opposite. Really? <laughs> really slow, <laughs> yeah. It's a slow connection. <laughs> That's hilarious. It's a slow connection to space, but it is connected at least. That's pretty funny. Yeah. All right, so let me ask you about this. How are these caves similar to space? Well, what you're trying to do when you're preparing to go to space is you want to replicate the environment as much as possible. And it's really hard to do that on Earth. So there are certain characteristics of some of these expeditions, being underwater, being in a cave, uh, being in a canyon. I've done that. I've done some kayaking, uh, a, a kayaking trip, a cold weather survival trip. Really? You do these things. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to elicit certain characteristics like being uncomfortable, being tired, working together to accomplish a goal, to make your meals, to set up your camp, to, to accomplish your science objectors. You take turns That's being the really leader. Who's the leader? Who's the, who's the follow, who are their followers today? And you, and, you, and you start learning about yourself and your crewmates. And after about a week or so in that type of environment, you start getting cranky, <laughs> which is important because you want to recognize in yourself why you're cranky. Right. You're dehydrated, you need food, you miss home, whatever it is. And you start recognizing those things in your crewmates as well. And it's a great analog to what space flight is like. You got to keep track of your stuff. You got to be able to move around, work as a team, prepare each day, who's going to be in charge, and so on and so forth. So we found that these types of expeditions are really useful in getting people ready to fly in space. Also on Tuesday, NASA yeah. successfully tested a booster for the world's most powerful rocket at a test facility in Utah. The space launch system will assist the Orion spacecraft's tests scheduled for, the, for 2018 as part of NASA's journey to Mars. So the idea is that this rocket motor will one day propel astronauts out of Earth's orbit towards the red planet. So in simple terms, what is this rocket booster designed to do? Okay, so right now we've been uh, stuck with people in low Earth orbit. The last time we had anyone beyond low Earth orbit was when we went to the moon. And I was, just a, I was a little kid back then. That was a long, a long time ago, back in the 70s. Uh, so we haven't done that since. We went to the shuttle program, which kept people in low Earth orbit. We now have the space station going again, low Earth orbit in the neighborhood around the Earth. So we're trying to go beyond that. And you need a bigger rocket to do that. And that's what this is designed to do. Hmm. Take us, take people. And we've had other probes and rovers and stuff going beyond low Earth orbit. But we want to take people to places like maybe the moon or to Mars or to an asteroid somewhere beyond low Earth orbit. And that's what this is all about. And so how much of the data that is gathered will help NASA? Well, this is very important. This is a NASA, this is actually a NASA program. There's some of the, uh, the commercial uh, entrepreneurial companies are trying to do similar things. This is what, what you showed in, in this particular test is a NASA test. Uh, so what, what they're trying to do is just t test the rocket motor. There's lots of pieces to getting there, right? You have the spacecraft that people are going to live in. There's the, the, the rocket itself that's going to propel them. And then there's the rocket motor, the thing where the fire comes out of. <laughs> right. That's going to get you somewhere. Yeah, that's <laughs> what a, the fiery end of it. And that's what this is. Right. And so that was a test, and they tested it on the ground. Uh, <laughs> clear everyone out of the way, make sure it's not going to go any place, and put it on a test stand and fire it. These are really cool things to watch. I've gotten a chance to see a couple of them. Oh, man. They're very exciting events to see. Before you go, there's a paper that was initially published back in 2009, and it's now getting some attention. It's part of the author's vision for the future, and that is that dead spacecrafts and abandoned satellites floating in space may one day become stops for tourists on their ways to planets like Mars. So the idea being that junk that's floating around in space yeah. is going to be of interest to ordinary people here on planet mm -hmm. Earth on their way to Mars. They're going to stop and say, oh, let me go check out, you know, the Voyager 1 and see right. what that's doing. 
<laughs> that might be cool, but let me you, look for behind that photo of that whatever that rocket is, that, that <laughs> right. space. Right. You see the Earth behind yeah, it? Yeah, right. That's pretty cool. That's to look pretty at cool. Too. <laughs> All right, so I think I'm just like you. I, I'm the yeah, same. I mean, just going, looking out that window <laughs> yeah. is is enough for me, <laughs> right. and I think probably for most people. Looking at the stars, it's incredible. You're above the atmosphere. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. That doesn't happen in space. The reason it stars twinkle, Vlad, is because the light comes through our atmosphere and is distorted a little bit. When you see them above the atmosphere, they're perfect points of light. It's incredible. Wow, the colors that you see out there, the, the, the constellations, the, the, and then the view of the planet is just magnificent. So I would rather, you know, I would rather look at that. But it's an interesting idea. Michael Massimino, it's so great <laughs> to meet you. It is my pleasure. Yeah, it was what a awesome. Blast. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me.